Hello YouTube, Sam here from youtube.com slash onlivegamer and welcome to your 19th Visual C Sharp tutorial. And this is going to be a fairly simple tutorial. What we're going to be talking about is the properties bar for Windows Forms and um, buttons for now because we used a button in the previous tutorial. So let's go over here to our form1.cs design from our previous tutorial and you can see here we've got form1. Now if you click on form1, make sure it's selected, you'll see a dotted line around the outside edge and come over here to the right and you'll find this bar called properties now this has a whole bunch of stuff in it that you're going to be using a lot to customize the way your controls work and the way your controls interact with other controls and the look and feel of everything so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the most important things we're going to use and some of the other things so here we've got name so the name is um, basically the name of the form so this isn't shown anywhere. This is what we use in the code to talk about Form 1. You can see here we've got our Form 1 constructor. Now, you don't know what a constructor is. You probably don't. You might. Um, it doesn't really matter right now. But just know that the name is what we reference the form as in the code. Now, let's take a look at some other things. We've got um, just a whole bunch of stuff such as auto scroll, auto scale mode, allow drop. Um, all these do various things. You can take a look at the description when you click on them and it will tell you what they do. Allow drop indicates whether con the control can accept da data that the user drags onto it. So let's say they've got a uh, text or a file or something. If you, they drag it and drop it, then it will allow them to use that. So let's take a look at some other stuff. We can change the back color of our form by looking at um, different color schemes we can choose from. We've got custom, which can be pretty much any color. We've got web, which is what you'd think it would be. It's colors that are commonly used on the web. We've got system colors, which are neutral colors, just grays and blues and blacks. So let's go ahead and change the background to, let's say, active border. Now, you can see here that this is a Windows Arrow basic theme that we've got going on right here on the window. But when we run it, if we have Arrow enabled, it's going to show up as Arrow see that right there you can see that there's a difference there because when you're designing it it's only got the basic theme now we can set an image for the background um, just by clicking these three dots and check re local resource and you can import a picture to use there so I'll go ahead and cancel that um, we've got a whole bunch of other stuff you can change the cursor too so whenever they move their cursor over this um, form it's going to change to uh, a different icon if we change it oh, something else from the default so if we change it to no when the user moves their mouse over this form you can see it gives us a caution sign now you can also set this for certain controls so if a control is not supposed to be used right then let's say you don't want to use say hello you can set it to when they move this over say hello it's going to tell show them that they can't click it and you can also set it to um, disable too so and that's where that comes in enabled so enabled basically means you can use it or not. So let's go over here and check the button and we'll disable the button and see what that looks like. So we can just change that to false. And you can see here that we can't click the button, we can't do anything from it. It looks like it's kind of recessed into the form. Now you can change this throughout your code if you want to. Now basically the way you would do that is use the name of the object. So in our case, um, the button is button say hello. So what we're going to do is type button say hello and then this is where we can access all of the properties of it. So we're going to access the property enabled because that's what we used um, in the designer in our properties. So you can see here we've got, let's see, enabled and it's equal to false. So all we have to do is set this equal to true and then it will enable it. Now you can put this anywhere. Um, let's say they click on another button and you want it to enable this, then you can go ahead and do that. So let's take a look at some of the other stuff. You can set the four color, uh, which is the foreground. So if um, whenever there's text on it, the background of that text is going to be this color. Um, you can set the form border style. We've got sizable, none, which will give us no uh, border style which looks kind of strange because we can't actually move it around you can see right there um, let me get this window back into place so let's go ahead and stop debugging this so we can get rid of that 
uh, you can set the form border style to a whole bunch of other stuff based on what you want that form to do. We got fixed single where they can't resize it. Fixed 3D which gives it a little 3D look like the um, controls are down inside the window. Fixed dialog um, which is basically sim the almost the same thing as a fixed single. Uh, we've got sizable to where you can change the window size all you want. Fixed tool window which just gives us a close button and you can't resize it. And sizable tool window which is the same thing as a fixed tool window except you can resize it of course. Um, you can change the icon by um, importing a .ico file. Uh, let's see if I have one here. Looks like I don't have one. So I'm just going to cancel that. And let's see what else we have. You can set the language. You can um, allow them to maximize or minimize. Or you can disallow them from doing that. And you can do a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, what you can do with buttons is you can dock them. Now what this basically means is that it will attach itself to certain parts of the form. So if we dock it to the top, you can see it um, expands it out all, to all sides and it attaches itself to the top. Now we can dock it by clicking the middle button, it'll fill up the whole thing. Bottom goes to the bottom, keeping the size. Left goes to the left, keeping the length. Right, it will do the same thing as it did for the left and um, none which will leave it the way it was so I've left out a whole bunch of stuff here um, but you can go ahead and go through this click on them and you can read the uh, description of that property down below so um, go ahead take some time to look at the properties you're, you're gonna be glad you did that later on when you start making programs so uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to comment rate and subscribe